Swap Meet XLT Part 5. Well, the boys are all out of town this week. It's just me. So I'm just going to dig in and see how far I can get. Uh, I'm going to start with this reverse chain case and get the track and the skid in. Maybe take a good, quick look at the motor. I'd love to have that in by the end of this episode. But who knows how long it'll get before I get there or what problems I'll run into. So uh, let's just get after it and find out how it's going to work out. So even before I get after the reverse chain case, I want to make a track decision here. So uh, I've got these two tracks, and you can see the length is nearly identical. The one on the foreground is a taller Polaris lightning bolt track, and it's a 133 and a half. The, the other one is that uh, track that came on this sled. And, uh, you know, the lug depth is about the same. I'm going to say that the lightning bolt's going to be a better trail track and probably better for ditch banging. But uh, I think the real deciding factor is going to be the weight. So uh, I've found throughout the years that if I can take three to five pounds off by switching to a lighter track, it usually equates to a, a seat in the pants difference in acceleration. So I'll weigh these up quick and uh, I'll show you what they weigh. All right, so first up on the scale is the Polaris Lightning Bolt. And uh, looks like, try to get the light where you can maybe read it, get my hand off it. Yeah, it looks like 41, maybe 42 pounds. That's what I'm seeing on the down there. So, uh, I don't know. That's not too bad for a 133 and a half. Let's weigh the other one now. All right, looking at the Kempex track and uh, 45 pounds. So uh, that makes my decision pretty easy. You know, three, four pounds off of this thing. And uh, what I think is a better tread pattern for trail, it's a no-brainer going with the Polaris Lightning Bolt track there. Well, details up me some instructions before he left for the week. He told me to get cleaning. So uh, specifically, told me that the uh, whole area under the chain case and jack shaft still needed to be cleaned and Sure enough, it does. So I uh, guess I'll clean my own stuff for once. All right, details. I got her about as clean as I think I can get it without the pressure washer. All right, next step after the cleaning is to lay in the jack shaft, slip the track under, and put the drive shaft in. Then it's time to start thinking about the chain case. The only time to paint your jack shaft is when it's out. And details left me some purple spray paint. Kind of dark, but looks better than it did. There we go. Good enough. Better than it was. A couple nights have passed, a little honeydew list action, but uh, I'm super happy to get back in the shop. So the first thing I'm going to do when I start to put this thing back together is uh, lay in the jack shaft and get to that bolt. You guys all know what bolt I'm talking about on these Polaris's. It's the bolt you got to access from inside the tunnel. So uh, that's the first thing. Actually, before I get the jack shaft put in, the first thing is to make sure I selected and painted the right jack shaft. Because we do have 15 spline and 13 spline jack shafts. Come on, there we go. All right, got the right jack shaft for the gears I'm gonna run. So I uh, guess I'll start getting that laid in. Then I'll shove the track in there and the drive shaft and keep putting her together. All right, well, I use these bearings. I've talked about them before. They're the kind with the set screws, not the eccentric collar. And if you look around, maybe you can see that right there. There's a little pinhole. And I have this uh, rubber tip greaser. 
And I'm probably going to have to brace it on the table. But I am able to pump these bearings up with extra grease. How much? That much. Don't worry about it being too much. It just kind of splashes around in, inside the flangettes. So, uh, I don't know. I advise doing that every time. Why wouldn't you? All right, I'm over here on the clutch side of the sled, and I want to point out that there's two lengths of carriage bolts. So the short ones are for the jack shaft, and they go in uh, with the head towards the secondary clutch. And, uh, of course, the one I'm talking about that's such a bastard is this bottom one. That one, if you work on these sleds, you know that one, and you know what a pain it is. So uh, I'm going to get the nut on that one. I'll actually get the nut started on all three jack shaft bolts uh, right now. Welcome to the tunnel. So uh, this is that nut that I got to tighten inside the tunnel. And uh, usually I end up giving it the old reach around so I can keep uh, thumb of one hand on the, on the head of that carriage bolt and torque her up with the other hand. So uh, that should be a lot of fun. All right, here's a tip for you. I, I sent that bolt inside the tunnel home. Tighten her all the way up. But uh, I left these two guys just a little loose, just a little rattly, because I don't have the chain case on yet. And i got to be able to move that around to align it for the chain case. So uh, once the chain case is in, I'll torque the nuts on these two, and I'll do the set screw. So basically, I get the chain case all the way together. I get all the gears and chain and everything installed. Then I tighten that stuff up. All right, here's another tip for you. So you've got this collar that goes on. That's, that's what the chain case seals to. goes on uh, right after the brake rotor. So if you look really close, you can see one side of it protrudes out. The other side of it's got like a, a recess towards the inside, and there's an O-ring. So uh, the O-ring fits inside that recess like so, and the O-ring goes towards the chain case to seal everything. So I know I say a lot of this stuff repeatedly in videos. Well, we're getting new subscribers all the time, and I don't know if they're going back and watching all the old videos. So uh, here's another one of those things. When you look at your track, you'll see an arrow. Can you see that? And the arrow is the direction of the track rotation. So uh, with this one, with the arrow on top pointing forward, that's correct. If you put your track in backwards, what usually happens is you, you don't brake very good anymore. You get more acceleration, traction, you know, you get more traction going forward, but you lose a lot of braking. I've done it a couple times. It's a thing I might do for grass drags, but uh, I don't do it for trail rides. All right, well, I got something neat to show you, but I checked and this camera doesn't uh, really focus in real close, so I'll just put a picture right there. So this bearing uh, was an original Polaris bearing with Polaris part numbers and even has the word drive shaft etched into the end of it. Kind of neat. I've seen a few of them over the years, but not that many in, on a sled with 6,600 miles. I don't know. Maybe other people see them all the time, but I don't. So uh, anyways, a lot of triples have these four-wheel drive shafts, and you got to put the drive shaft in before you put your chain case on and put it together. With the two wheels, you can have the chain case up there, and you know you can just slip it over, drop it down, and take it out. Right? Well, with the four wheels, there's not enough travel to actually get this end disengaged. And of course, if you 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 can't shove it any further into the chain case, you know the bearing will stop on the shoulder there. So uh, I'm going to shove this thing in right now, and uh, we'll keep on working on it. Well. I was cleaning this chain case out, and I found some really bad news. Can you see this? Let me get some more light on it. Yeah, the snap ring groove was blown out more than halfway around. Kids sleds. So anyways, I'm going to show you how to make this non-reverse chain case into a reverse chain case. And I think it's pretty obvious. i got to get this off of here and move it over to here. And... Uh, it's, there's this little wear plate here. I'll move that over too. What the heck? So uh, I'm going to get after it. 
All right, I've never done this before, so learn with me. But uh, it looks like it's just a carriage bolt. And it looks like it's just a nylock. And it looks like it's just a 3 8 fine thread nut. So, next challenge is to get this off without damaging it, because this is also a carriage bolt, and there's no flats. And uh, if you damage it, you're going to hate life because needle bearings run on this shaft. So uh, let me put together a plan for that. So, as far as I can tell, i got to grab onto that with a vice grip. And of course the vice grip is going to mar it. So, i got a good old silver bullet here. And I'm going to make some strips to uh, protect the shaft. Probably more than I need. I'm just going to give her a couple wraps. Ideally, I'd use brass shims, brass shim stock, but uh, I don't have any brass shim stock. But I do have beer cans. I don't know how that happened, but I have beer cans. Right, we're going to grip her pretty tight and. I think that moved. I'm guessing there's Loctite in there, so uh, hopefully this doesn't go poof from the brake cleaner. It is not moving yet. Shoot. I hope that would work better than that. On the other hand, I can tell you that I did not mar the shaft. Just it's slipping too cleanly. Hey, we got it. And I can smell the Loctite already. So indeed, the torch was required. Well, that wear plate's just coming right out. No, uh, no need for an impact driver. A little surprised on that. All right, I got that wear plate in. Give this some red. It was definitely red Loctite when I took it apart, and a lot of it. All right. Just got a 3 8 bolt in the top. And I'm just gonna gun her down. And that'll be good enough. And then I should be able to just back the nut off and spin the bolt out. Life's good. Chain case converted to reverse. All right, here's the chain case. New bearings, sealed bearings, belt and suspenders, because I'm also running seals. A long, long time ago, I converted a TX to one of these newer chain cases with the top loader brakes, and I didn't change the bearings and seals, and it oiled down my brake rotor, and uh, it wasn't fun. So, uh, I don't know, I think bearings and seals are cheap insurance. All right, that's done. Chain case is torqued down. I got the flanges tightened down on the other side, but I didn't do the set screws yet. I don't do the set screws until I have the chain and gears all installed, you know, in case the shafts shift a little bit when I'm tightening up the gears or something. Then I'll lock down the set screws. Well, the next step is a whole bunch of cleaning parts for that reverse chain case because everything that came off that kid's sled was filthy. It's boring, so I'll do it off camera and... Uh, I'll put the chain case together off camera because I, I literally just did one on the Indy 600. So I'll put a card for that up here for the uh, Indy 600 video. Otherwise, go check out the whole playlist because we know you like triples. So uh, anyways, thanks to the patrons. 
you guys are the best. We, we really appreciate your support of the channel. And uh, thanks to all the subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Hit the thumbs up. Even do that notification bell thing, whatever that does. I think it just tells you I got a new video coming out. And um, we'll see you on the trails.